My name is Zach Greenemeyer, uh, Z-A-C-K-G-R-E-E-N-A-M-Y-R-E, with the law firm Mitchell and Shapiro in Atlanta. I want to start by providing a brief overview of the facts of this case as they are currently known. Then I want to introduce a couple members of the Bolton family and let you know um, what they've been through so far and trying to get answers about what happened on the day their loved one died. Here are the facts as we currently know them. In the early morning hours of December 17th, 2020, a Cobb County Sheriff's Office SWAT team shot and killed Johnny Bolton during uh, the execution of a nighttime no-knock search warrant seeking evidence of drugs. In the moments immediately prior to the SWAT team's entry, Bolton was sleeping on a couch in the apartment where he lived, in the living room. According to eyewitnesses in the apartment, Bolton stood up in response to the uh, SWAT team breaking down the door and then was immediately shot multiple times. Bolton was unarmed. Bolton did not take any threatening actions towards any officer. Neighbors in the apartments immediately next to Johnny's uh, heard two loud booms in quick succession. The warrant affidavit, which was created by police officers from the Cobb County Police Department and the Marietta Cobb Smyrna Drug Task Force, stated the apartment was used to sell drugs. In fact, for months, the apartment had been used as an informal boarding house with two bedrooms rented out to women and their children. None of the apartment's occupants were identified in the warrant, and none of the people named as suspects in the warrant, uh, the drug dealers, the suspected drug dealers, were present when the warrant was executed. The warrant's affiant, the uh, Cobb County Police Department officer who swore out the warrant, specifically stated uh, that no minors resided in the apartment. Uh, in response to the judge's question about uh, getting a no-knock warrant. That was not accurate. Johnny Bolton's name appears nowhere in the warrant application. We've seen no document uh, indicating in any way that he was suspected of any criminal conduct. The autopsy shows five bullet entry wounds consistent with Bolton having been shot two to five times. The autopsy is consistent with witness statements that Johnny put his hands up in response to them, the police officers taking the door in order to protect his face. The Cobb medical examiner ruled the death a homicide. Johnny Bolton was 49 years old. He worked at a car wash nearby. He made music in his free time. He was a talented singer, but he was shy uh, in performing. He slept on the couch where he was killed. He was survived by his sister, Daphne Bolton, and his children Diamond Bolton, herself a mother, and Kyrie Bolton, a collegiate scholar athlete in New Jersey. The Bolton family is here to demand answers. Why hasn't the Cobb Sheriff Craig Owens released all video of the incident to show the public what took place? Who are the Cobb County Sheriff's officer, Office personnel who shot and killed Johnny Bolton? Why do these officers claim that they shot Johnny while he was sleeping and unarmed. Why was the Cobb MCS trying to execute a search warrant, a nighttime no-knock warrant on an apartment housing people different than those identified in the warrant? And where's the accountability for the killing of an unarmed, sleeping black man by law enforcement? We, the family, the attorneys, have a privately approached all of the law enforcement agencies involved seeking answers to these very basic questions. Instead of transparency, we've been met with silence. Their actions to date in the aftermath of Johnny's death show they do not believe that Johnny's life mattered. But we know otherwise. We will not be stopped from telling Johnny's story. This is the start. And from what we know now, Johnny's death appears unnecessary and unjustified. The family's gonna make uh, brief statements. Uh, they're not gonna take questions at this time. Afterwards, um, uh, Bill Atkins uh, will make a statement and then the attorneys can, can answer questions. Um, first, I wanna introduce y'all to, to Daphne Bolton, uh, Johnny's sister, uh, and uh, she will read the statement. Thank you all for coming out. This is very important to me, his sister, 
and his remaining family and friends all across the United States. Unfortunately, this storyline has played out too many times to recast. The sorrow and hurt of the death of my brother, Johnny Lorenzo Bolton, by the hands of the police department is no different than the hurt and sorrow and pain felt across countless families in this world. At this point, our intentions surround actions and justice. Cobb County has not cooperated with our family nor shared any information about the death or the events that led up to my brother's death, Johnny Lorenzo Bolton. Hear his name. We call on today Sheriff Craig Owens to release all video of the incident to show the public what took place. We demand they identify the Cobb County Sheriff's officer, personnel who shot and killed my brother, Johnny Lorenzo Bolton. We want answers. Why did the officers shoot and kill my brother? Where is the accountability? This happened December the 17th of 2020. Six months silence. Where's the accountability? And please note that today marks the one year anniversary today of George Floyd. And I stand here today having to do this. Another family having to do this. We are here today to say Johnny Lorenzo Bolton, my brother, the only brother that I have. won't be covered up and we will not be silenced. We will bring to the light of day and justice will come and my brother's death will not be in vain. That's all for now. And now I'd like to introduce uh, Johnny's uh, children, Kyrie Turner and Diamond Bolton. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. On December 17, 2020, law enforcement officers shot and killed our father, Johnny Lorenzo Bolton. Since then, we have been looking for answers. We know from the medical examiner that he was shot multiple times, died from being shot from those gunshot wounds, of course. We know from the people that live with him that he was not armed and was sleeping right before he was shot. We've asked all the law enforcement agencies involved in the warrant for information about what happened, and they've told us almost nothing. We just want answers on how this happened, what led to this, you know. He hasn't met his daughter, my daughter, my child, and they took that away from him because that's what he was going to do. And we just need answers and we want justice. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Bill Atkins with the law firm of Edmund, Lindsay, and Atkins, and I will be working uh, with Zach Rienemeyer on this tragic case. A family should not have to hold a press conference to find out how a government agent killed their loved one. But that apparently is what it takes in this country to get the attention of law enforcement when these sorts of things happen. For nearly six months, this family has calmly, quietly done everything that the law enforcement across the community, across this country asked for. Be calm. Wait. We'll get you answers. We will give you what you need. Just be calm. Wait. We'll give you the answers. Well, they don't. They don't. And they haven't. And that's why we end up here. We understand that at this present moment, the DA's office has a job to do that they are supposed to be reviewing this case, but that does not stop the sheriff's office from speaking to this family. That does not stop the newly elected sheriff who promised to change the way things would be done in Cobb County from being transparent. That's all we've asked for is transparency. Is that too much for any American citizen to ask for when they discover that one of their loved ones has been shot and killed by a police officer? Is transparency too much to ask for? I don't think so. And this family doesn't think so.
So today we are here asking for some measure of truth and accountability. We hope we will get some answers. Some answers. And let's be clear. Delay is not an accident. Let's be clear about that. In Georgia, as long as a case remains under investigation, this family can't get anything through the Open Records Act. They can't ask for documents because they'll be told the case is under investigation. Never mind the fact that those investigations, time and time and time again, lead to absolutely no accountability for the law enforcement officers involved in a police shooting. But what they do do is delay the opportunity for a family who is grieving to understand how we got here. The delay is not an accident, but it's time for it to stop. It starts here, and we will not be silent any longer. We will not play their game any longer. That's all I have. If anybody has any questions, we'll be happy to answer them. Are you asking for the public release of body camera video? Are you simply demanding a meeting with Sheriff Bowens and have him explain what happened and perhaps just show you all the body camera video? We're asking, Sheriff, you, Steps you'll come up to the mic. We're asking Sheriff Owen to release any video associated with this warrant execution, and we're asking the sheriff to sit down and speak with us, speak with the family face to face to tell them what happened. Tell them who, which one of his people uh, shot and killed Johnny Bolton in his sleep. So you're telling us this family has never met with anybody with this department? We have reached out repeatedly to uh, officers with the Cobb County Sheriff's Office, with the Cobb MCS, with the Cobb uh, Police Department, uh, repeatedly, uh, politely, to, to speak with them. And we have been repeatedly rejected, uh, at best, most often met with nothing but silence. Clarification on his question. So I, I know you're requesting that meeting and explanation, very simple things. But the video, are you asking to go public or to sit down with the attorneys, the families, and, and start that conversation there? I want to make sure with what we are all writing that we're very clear about that ask. So if I could take that question, the answer is both. I mean, obviously, we want them to sit down with the family. But the fact of the matter is that the public at large has a right to know what happened. What happened? It shouldn't be a secret when a government agent does this. We should know what happened. Not just the family, but the public. Um, I would add, for example, we don't even know if the officer who actually fired those shots, assuming it was just one officer, we don't even know if he's still on the job. We don't know if this sheriff's office even bothered to suspend him pending the investigation. Is that too much to ask? That somebody at least be taken off the streets long enough to find out if the shooting was justified? Is it too much to ask that the family find out who the person is who actually shot and killed their, their, their brother, their son, excuse me, their, their father? We don't think so. So point of clarification, was this his apartment that he was using as a boarding house for women and children? Is that, whose apartment was it? He had, Johnny lived in the apartment and had been living in the apartment for months. He slept on the couch uh, in, the, in the front room, in the living room. But so, it was not his apartment. He, he, his name is not on the lease. So were those listed in the warrant people who had rented that apartment or stayed in that apartment? Or is there any reason to believe that they had been there? No, the, uh, the, People who are living in the apartment, uh, their names appear nowhere in the warrant. But were the people who were listed in the warrant, had they been living in that apartment? Uh, one of the people who is listed in the warrant, uh, I believe the apartment uh, was his, uh, but the police knew that he was not at that location because at the same time they executed a warrant at his house where they knew he lived. Were there any children in the apartment at the time? Yes, uh, there was a teenage girl uh, who was in the in a back bedroom uh, as as this happened? Was anyone else in the apartment injured or detained uh, that night? Everyone in the apartment was detained. Uh, you know, some of these people were detained for upwards of 12 hours uh, without any charges before being released. So was anyone charged? Uh, some people have been charged after the fact. And when you say boarding house, uh, were these? This is an informal arrangement uh, where, where people would pay a small, you know, people going through tough times uh, would pay a small amount of money uh, to a friend 
uh, so that he could, uh, so that they could have a place to, to sleep that wasn't in the street. Has law enforcement given any indication as to why they used a no knock warrant? I mean, those come under a lot of scrutiny. Typically, it's supposed to be a pretty extreme situation. Uh, the indications that we have uh, are the same indications that we get for uh, no-knock warrants that have a lot of scrutiny around them, right? They're, they're looking for uh, evidence of a, a modest amount of drugs. Um, they're concerned uh, about officer safety. Um, but the you know, bigger picture uh, about this and, and why the family is calling for increased scrutiny about no-knock warrants is these are incredibly dangerous, not just for the people in the house, but also for, for law enforcement. Um, there, there's no reason that this particular uh, warrant needed to be a no-knock warrant, especially when you consider that none of the people they were looking for uh, were in the apartment. Was the warrant that um, was also simultaneously executed at the house where uh, the apartments, uh, that person came with the apartment, was that also a no-knock warrant? And what ended up happening to that individual when they executed it? Uh, that individual, uh, th th that warrant was also executed. Uh, I do, I do, it, they had the authority to execute it as a no-knock warrant. I'm not sure whether it was or not. Um, and that person was arrested and then uh, has, has made bail. In my conversation with Sheriff Owens earlier, he mentioned to me he's going to let the DA handle this case. Now, in the previous controversial police shooting that I've covered here in Cobb County, the DA presented this to a grand jury. Do you hope the same thing happens? Now, that officer here in Cobb County was cleared in the previous shooting that happened in July of last year. Do you hope the DA presents this case to a grand jury? Uh, I suspect that the, the DA will present this case to a grand jury. The better question, the more important question, is whether the DA makes a recommendation to the jury, uh, to the grand jury, that they uh, have an indictment, right? Um, to make that determination, uh, that's in part the DA's call, and in part that relies on information that simply hasn't been shared with the family, hasn't been shared with us, their attorneys. You want so the you DA want to present this with charges because the last case with the Truett case, he did not present this case with charges. You want an officer held accountable for this death, charged with murder? Well, we'd like to know what happened first. We'd like to know what happened. I mean, what we know now is that there was an unarmed African-American man sleeping on a couch in a living room. The door busted open. He stood up, which I think is what most of us would do if somebody knocked down our front door. And he was dead moments later. So, yeah, we'd like to know how that happened. And if that evidence suggests that charges should be brought, then, yes, we would expect full accountability, both criminally and civilly. And let me just add to your comment. The passing the buck to the DA's office when you have a grieving family by a sheriff is inexcusable. You don't get to just say, well, you know, the DA's office is investigating, so we're not going to talk to you. There is absolutely nothing that prevents this sheriff from having the common decency to speak with this family and give them some answers. Nothing. Just because the DA's office is looking at a case doesn't mean the sheriff can't answer questions. And to go further, just because the DA's office is looking at the case doesn't mean that the sheriff cannot release the video. Uh, it doesn't mean that the sheriff cannot uh, make the decision to identify the officer, to describe what uh, investigation his office has done. Uh, regardless of whether uh, the officer or officers who killed Johnny Bolton uh, committed a crime, uh, something obviously went horribly wrong and nothing has happened about it so far as we know. Uh, that's not only the DA's responsibility, that's also the sheriff's responsibility. Do you have any idea how many SWAT officers were on the scene or how many officers, period? Uh, I do not know uh, exactly how many officers were involved. Can, can you all explain um, sort of what the law is around no-knock warrants in Georgia and how it may compare to other states? Or the... Do you want to take it home? Go ahead. Uh, there needs to be specific probable cause for a no-knock warrant to be issued. Just the fact of uh, the fact that a crime has taken place uh, or that drugs may or may not be present in a, in a dwelling does not give the right uh, for a no-knock warrant. Uh, police need probable cause to believe that there is a serious risk to officer safety from going in uh, that would not exist if they knocked on the door and uh, or they need a uh, probable cause to believe that evidence could be destroyed um, if they knock and announce.
How many people were inside the house? You mentioned the young teenager, Johnny. At least four people were in the house. What's the apartment? apartment. In, in, in the apartment, correct. Uh, and three of those people, uh, Johnny and two others, were in the room uh, where Johnny was uh, and were eyewitnesses to what happened. Um, quick question. So you mentioned that some people in the apartment did face charges later. Were those charges related to what was on the warrant or were there... What were they arrested for? Uh, I don't have the, the exact answer to that, but it's uh, it's in the record. Just to go back to your question really quick on no-knock warrants, uh, think about the fallacy of those two justifications for a no-knock, uh, danger to police and uh, destruction of evidence. Um, we live in a country with more guns than people. That's the country we live in. Law enforcement, I should have every expectation, I would guess, that most of the time if they bust in the door, there's a decent chance someone's going to have a gun, right? So if that's the justification, it exists in every case, in every case, right, that potential risk. And number two, are we really going to put law enforcement and innocent people inside a home in a situation where lives are at risk because we're worried about whether someone's going to flush some drugs down the toilet? What's more important to you? Drugs? or people's lives. Priori prioritization needs to change in the law enforcement community. Lives should come first. Everyone's life should come first. Do you know uh, if we- Going off of this question that you had, can you explain how our rules are in Georgia compared to other states? I mean, is this something that you know needs to change? Um, can you talk a little bit about that? Yep. So a number of places around the country have recently come to this recognition, right? That no-knock warrants are dangerous for law enforcement. And if the no-knock warrant is justified on the basis of drugs being flushed down the toilet, it's necessarily a small amount of drugs uh, that isn't worth anybody's life, right? Uh, and as a result of that realization, uh, cities and states around the country have started to ban no-knock warrants. Uh, Cobb County should do the same. The state of Georgia should do the same. Uh, to value life, uh, no-knock warrants should be severely restricted, if not eliminated. Do you know what kind of drugs that they were looking for inside this apartment? I don't know exactly what they were looking for. Did they find any drugs, do you know? I don't know what they found uh, in this location or the other, versus the other location. So can you give us the address of the apartment? Yeah, 505 Spring Brook in Smyrna. So what was the car shop in Brooklyn? Uh, it was a, a car wash, uh, and I don't know the name of it, um, near, nearby. And you have a picture of uh, Mr. Bolton that we can Several. Yeah, 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 yeah we, have, we have plenty of photos. Um, if y'all shoot me a, an email, uh, I'll send them to, to anybody who wants them. Thank you. Oh, on the uh, Springbrook uh, apartment, what apartment number was it? Uh, it's 505. Uh, 505 is the address, and that's also the, the apartment number. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I know y'all are taking questions. Can I just get everyone's name? Uh, yes. It's Valley. All right, thanks, y'all. Daphne, D-A-P-H-N-E, Bolton, B-O-L-T-O-N. Diamond, Diamond, like me. D I A M O N G. Kyrie Turner. Kyrie K Y R I O U. A M is in Mary. And how old is Kyrie? Diamond is 24, and how old is Kyrie? Both of you are 24. Okay, thank you. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming.
Okay. 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 Okay.